uh, you know the name of the talk, so uh, let's start with uh, a few words about myself. Uh, my name is Grzegorz. Uh, if you are not Polish, uh, please do not try to pronounce it. Uh, tongue injuries generally uh, are not covered by your insurance. Uh, instead, please call me Greg. Uh, I'm a senior DevOps engineer in Center of Excellence uh, of uh, in Asia Cluster. I have two years of experience uh, as uh, DevOps and five years of experience with Azure. On my day-to-day, -day, I work mostly with Kubernetes and Terraform. Um, and I want to share uh, a quote from Bill Gates with you. Uh, he said, I will always find a lazy person to do a difficult job because they will find a, an easy way to do it. And as a lazy engineer, I could not agree more. I strive for optimization and automation uh, in everything I do. Uh, I even put uh, sugar in my tea before pouring water, so it uh, so it stirs automatically. So this this is the level of automation I, I strive for. Uh, personally, I'm a father of two. I read science fiction and fantasy books, uh, and I host weekly D and D games. In short, I'm a huge nerd. Uh, Today, we will talk about Kubernetes event-driven autoscaling, or KEDA for short. I will explain to you what it is, uh, what are its capabilities, and what resources it provides. Then I will show you a real-life use case, uh, how it was implemented, and what it means in savings. After that, we'll have uh, time for Q&A. And for those like me with ADHD and uh, short attention span, please focus especially on the savings part as it will help you uh, convince your clients to use this software. Uh, savings are also a great metric uh, for our success uh, with clients. So this is also a good benefit for that. Uh, what is KEDA? Uh, all of you have been to McDonald's. Uh, some of you probably even worked there. Uh, as a student. Uh, so as you know, when cashier takes your order, they usually don't do everything by themselves. They put your order in the system, you get a number, you wait uh, at the back end, <laughs> sorry, uh, in the kitchen, uh, your order is being prepared. Uh, maybe you were a first client, client in a while, so cook has to get back from your break, from their break, or maybe there is a lot of orders and you'll wait for a while be, uh, before uh, your order is uh, processed. Whatever it is, at the end you get your burger and fries, and KEDA does exactly that. Uh, it's a system that makes sure that there's uh, enough cooks in the kitchen so that your users can get served as fast as possible by not bankrupting you in the process. Uh, and now for a bit of techno bubble, because we all love it, uh, KEDA is project aimed at providing seamless and provider agnostic cluster component that makes it easy to scale applications based on events. Uh, KEDA is free and open source software uh, project, uh, it's managed by Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and it's currently financially backed by Red Hat and Microsoft. Especially uh, this, the backing from Microsoft, uh, is important, and I will show you later why is that. Uh, it supports multiple event sources out of the box, including uh, Apache Kafka, AWS SQSQ, uh, Azure Service Bus, GCP, PubSub, IBM MQ. Uh, I don't know if we have people old enough to remember that, uh, as well as Prometheus. Um, on next slides, I will show you three basic concepts of KEDA. So uh, the first of those is scaled object. A uh, scaled object works on deployment, stateful sets, or custom resources. The only, uh, the only limitation is that it must have a replicas property. Uh, uh, it is a higher level object than deployment or stateful set. Uh, you just need to reference those, uh, like in here. Uh, and uh, this is a presentation. I will not be going through all of those values. You can read this in documentation by yourself. I highly, highly recommend to do so. Um, so uh, the next object is scaled job. 
uh, it is used for one of jobs when you have data set to parse or work item to process. Uh, all of the scaled job is defined as a single object. Uh, as you can see, you have uh, spec and then template and in template, as with uh, deployments or uh, scale sets, you, uh, you describe your, uh, your job template. Uh, the logic of this is as follows. Uh, at first, there are no jobs. Uh, then the event is triggered. For example, message arrives in a queue. Uh, Keda sees there's an active message. It creates a new job. Job starts. It takes the message from the queue. It processes it, it, processes it uh, and if another message arrives, Keda will create another job uh, to, be, uh, to process the, the next message. Uh, if there are more messages than we have uh, declared for our uh, max replica counts, they will wait patiently uh, for the time when there, there are free resources to process the jobs. By itself, Keda will not do anything with the message. You must ensure that the application can connect to your event source, like a uh, message queue, and take the message from there, uh, work on it, and then uh, send the information that the message is done. Uh, remove the message from the queue, obviously. Um, the third object, uh, third concept are scalers. Uh, so uh, what if you want to scale on something that is not a simple event? Keda will allow you to do so as well by defining scalers like Prometheus, for example, uh, or just a simple CPU or memory scalers. Uh, using that, you can scale your cluster with all manner of metrics like HTTP requests per second. What's more, you can scale your cluster based on metrics coming from other clusters, which is not as easy to do with, uh, with just what Kubernetes is offering. Uh, this works, works great with scaled objects that we uh, that I have described you to uh, two slides past, uh, because you can increase the number of your web application servers uh, based on real metrics uh, like uh, request per second and not first or second order derivatives uh, like memory consumption, for example, because uh, we can generally can't compute that uh, each user uh, each user served currently is let's say 50 megabytes but it's not an exact science right uh, remember when I told you that uh, the project is sponsored by Microsoft it's now important because uh, Keda allows us to run Azure functions uh, in our own clusters you might ask now, uh, Greg, uh, why do we want to ditch uh, glorious serverless architecture and go, uh, go back to the stone age of actually maintaining our own uh, infrastructure? Well, you might want to do that to save money or save time. Uh, Azure functions can only run in Azure infrastructure, but what if you have your data in on-prem database? What if you can't move the data because of regulatory or security concerns? Uh, would you just download the data for processing to Azure and then send it back down to your data center? That's, well, stupid and ineffective, right? Uh, now you can just deploy your Azure function in your on-prem cluster and benefit from Azure Functions while maintaining the uh, fast access times. It's really easy to do. You just create Docker image with one command, like in here, and then you deploy it to the cluster with another command, and that's it. <laughs> it now works. Uh, so uh, I have a question for you. Uh, how many of you play League of Legends? I uh, do. Okay, we will have a poll for that. So uh, even if you don't like uh, talking, uh, you can now answer the poll. We'll wait for a minute or two.
I guess Dota counts as well, right? Uh, yes, yes, basically yes. <laughs> Uh, it's similar. It's similar. I uh, I don't remember if the exact thing I want to explain is in Dota as well. Do, does Dota have words? Yeah, basically the League of Legends is like a, a copy of Dota, so even the creators are the same. Yeah. Okay. So uh, okay. Uh, uh, we have the results. So, okay. So most of you hadn't uh, hadn't played League of Legends, and some of you don't even know what is what it is. So, uh, allow me to briefly uh, explain uh, the game. So, uh, you have uh, two camps: uh, the blue camp and the red camp. Uh, these are two uh, two factions, uh, five players each, and there are three lanes on which the players will uh, fight with each other. Uh, uh, two, generally, uh, two players go into the bottom lane, uh, one player goes into the middle lane, and one player goes into top lane. After that, uh, we, as I said, there are five players. So the fifth player goes into uh, what's called a jungle in here and in here. They kill uh, NPCs to uh, get money, uh, and uh, they assist other players in their lanes. So uh, opponents might want to know what your uh, jungler, what's, uh, what they are called, uh, are doing. So they would place an item called a ward. A uh, ward is something that gives you visibility on the map. And uh, you, uh, as a player, uh, want, want to generally avoid them so you can uh, move through the map undetected. So. Imagine now that you are a professional player, you have a championship match uh, coming up and you want to prepare. You could uh, watch uh, hundreds, uh, hundreds hours of uh, opponents uh, matches to, uh, to figure out their uh, patterns, but it's generally boring and you probably, you probably have uh, some better things to do like training for yourself. But uh, luckily, there is a thing that is great at uh, monotonous and repetitive tasks, and it's called a computer. I'm pretty sure that you heard about that. Uh, and uh, so my client developed a solution that does exactly that. Uh, it generates a heat map of your opponent word placements, and now you know where uh, where you should go. As you can see, there's uh, one heat map like that provided uh, in the in the slide. And let's talk about how the process looks like for generating this. Uh, so client uh, sends a request. They want to uh, they want to analyze a video or multiple videos. So the request uh, goes to backend. Backend downloads the video from uh, YouTube, Twitch, or Vimeo, or wherever it was. Uh, it also uh, queues a new job in Service Bus queue. Uh, then uh, Kubernetes Autoscaler, our CADA, sees that there's a message in, uh, in Service Bus. And uh, Computer Vision Parser Container is spawned to uh, to analyze it, uh, computer vision generally uh, is uh, is based on uh, VMs with uh, sorry uh, is based on VMs with uh, GPUs. So as you know, pretty costly in both Azure GCP or or AWS, right? Uh, computer vision parser needs about uh, ten minutes to analyze the video. Uh, it then sends it to uh, sends the output data to a uh, heat map generator, which generates an image, and the image is sent back to the client. Uh, let me show you how it was implemented. So at first, uh, and we'll be using Azure. This is my weapon of choice, but it's uh, it's agnostic. You can, you can do this on any cloud. It's, this one is the best for me. It might not be the best for you. So uh, we create a node pool uh, with, uh, in specific resource group with a specific cluster. 
we we give it a name we define a node count so how many uh, uh how many servers we will have in there uh the eviction policy is delete because we don't really care about those servers when we are done with uh, processing uh we enable auto scaler uh from zero to one uh, which because we don't want to pay for idle computing uh, compute uh, we set the max spots to 10 whatever uh, we use uh, node VM size with uh, with GPU uh, in there. We also taint it so that uh, no, no other uh, no other uh, processes are started on that node. Uh, we have to do some specific uh, Azure magic. Uh, we also give it priority of spot. Uh, how many of you uh, heard about spots? Uh, you can use hands or uh, if if you want an explanation, just let me know. Uh, okay, uh, spots. Is regarding, uh, regarding of spot instance? Is... Yes, exactly. So I mean... spot instance is a way to for Azure to uh, increase their, uh, to uh, get more money for idle machines. So they have data center, their data center must consume power, et cetera. Uh, their uh, hardware is getting older and older. So uh, if no one wants to pay a full price that they decided uh, for their note, they will sell it for less just to uh, make sure that uh, this, uh, uh, this hardware is occupied and is generating at least some money, right? Uh, it's the same with Azure, with uh, AWS. In Google Cloud, it, it has different name, but uh, the premise is the same. Uh, and generally, spots instances uh, have uh, about 60 to 80 percent, are uh, 60 to 80 percent cheaper than the default, uh, the standards uh instance the uh, caveat is that uh if uh, a client comes that wants to pay a full price for that you will get evicted uh your data will be destroyed your vm will be taken from you so it's you know uh plus and minuses ups and downs uh but for our uh, for our needs when we are when our processing time is about 10 minutes this is not really an issue it's not really a danger uh and the savings of uh, 66 percent are definitely worth it uh now we uh, implement uh, the actual uh scaled job so it has a name uh it has uh it's uh Python uh, Python script that does all the work. I don't know why uh, uh, data science people love Python so much, uh, but well, unfortunately it is. We define some environment variables, uh, pretty boring stuff. You all did that more than once. Uh, we give it a max replica count of one uh, because this was only a proof of concept. Uh, then we define a trigger, uh, which is uh, something that uh, will actually uh, look at our uh, queue parser in a uh, namespace of uh, needle r and uh, And uh, this is what tells our, uh, our job where it should look for new messages. Uh, of course, we need to also uh, declare it in, uh, in here. Uh, because, as I said before, uh, CADA is not actually doing anything with the messages. Your application needs to do that. So application gets a service connection string and uh, trigger also gets a service connection string uh, specifically uh, described in here. Uh, and that's it. This is, uh, these are two objects. And with those, you are ready to, uh, to start your uh, data processing. And now for the savings in uh, my use case, computer vision parser was initially running on NC4 AST4 V3 uh, VM, which costs about 450 euros per month. It was running 24 seven uh, because it was uh, 
because it was uh, not, uh, not 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 greatly imp uh, implemented. Uh, uh, when a client wanted an analysis, uh, someone would log into the VM. They would run the pass uh, manually, uh, and then they would send them uh, the resulting image. Uh, when uh, the application was migrated to AKS Notebook with spot instances, we decreased the uh, monthly price uh, to 150 euros, so 66 uh, percent uh, of decrease in cost. So, at minimum, this is the the price decrease that you get, 66 percent. Depends on the VM type, it might go up to even 80, 80 or even 90%. Uh, uh, then, uh, because we had only 10% of our actual capacity, uh, the actual savings are 96%. So instead of 450 euros, we are paying like 20, which is like no cost at all. Uh, and this is the thing that I want you to remember. Keda generally offers you savings, uh, pretty big savings, uh, depending on your workload, uh, sometimes less, sometimes more, but it's certainly visible to clients that they paid this much, now they are paying 80% less. And with that, I would uh, like to thank you for uh, coming to my presentation and it's time for your questions. Can I open the table with a simple question? Mm -hmm. uh, probably it's not directly related to CADA and its functionality, uh, but still using the spot instances in this case, we require some good time, I guess, for the computer vision application. Uh, so the question is, uh, is there an, uh, what uh, can be offered as a benefit from CADA uh, to boot these, these, uh, these instances uh, faster? For example, or um, on a different preferred time, is there such a possibility? Uh, so no, unfortunately, you cannot uh, uh, you cannot boot them faster with Keda. It's uh, it's a downside uh, that I didn't mention. Uh, and thank you for for mentioning that. Uh, yes, with this approach, especially with uh, bigger VMs and bigger uh, images, it takes about five minutes from the first from the message appearing to message being processed. So if your workload depends uh, on being uh, as fast as possible, you will need to keep at least one VM uh, ready. Uh, for processing at all times, so the savings might be less, uh, but still you can uh, uh, you can benefit from auto scaling from one to many. Of course. Uh, thanks for that. And the very last thing uh, is the the queue only option to communicate with Keda. Keda. No, 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 no. So uh, there's uh, like. 50 something uh, event sources. Uh, I didn't uh, I didn't show all of them. Uh, uh, you can use generally you would prefer to use queues because they are the, the easiest to work with. but you have other options. you can uh, as I, as I shown, you can scale based on uh, Prometheus metrics, for example. Uh, you can also scale on uh, uh, memory and CPU. Uh, you can scale on uh, on multiple sources, uh, but yes, generally uh, uh, CADA is uh, used the best uh, with queues. Understood. Great presentation. Thank you for this. Uh, I have a question, Jagosh. Uh, thanks for a great presentation. First of all, uh, I would like to ask you because you you showed us uh, this comparison with older architecture with twenty four seven VM running. Uh, have you uh, compared the same thing, for example, with um, similar implementation using uh, scale set, for example, with zero instances running by default with a custom image? 
contain your application because uh, the thing uh, I'm asking actually, because um, it might be a difference in performance while you're running an instance, an application directly on it, an instance and a container environment on it and a container on the instance. So have you compared such a performance metrics, for example, in terms of uh, processing time? Uh, no, I did not. <laughs> Uh, uh, but it's a uh, it's a good uh, good idea. I will um, I will make a note of that, and I will check with a client if they might might want to invest resources in in checking that. But I think that uh, your approach would be faster, but it also would uh, require more uh, more preparation time. So yeah, of it's, course, it's required. It's more always a thing of uh, trade off. We get paid a lot. <laughs> Uh, fortunately for us, unfortunately for the clients. So if we need to spend an hour or two hours to prepare the new image, to make changes, etc., cetera, uh, it might not be beneficial for the clients to, uh, in regards to savings. Absolutely. It, it's not a question uh, in a business domain. I would say it's a question in R&D domain more, you know, to get more informed on performance metrics of such application running directly on a VM and running in a container environment. So that's only it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great presentation. And thank you for your questions. Any other questions?